Hi, my name is Manos Brilakis from VA North Texas Healthcare System and the University of Texas Southwestern Medical School. In this presentation, we will review some cases of uh, undegraded sexual reentry for CTO intervention, focusing on how to uh, achieve reentry in some challenging case scenarios. There are currently three broad CTO crossing techniques. The first is undergrade wire escalation. The second is undergrade sexual reentry, and the third is retrograde. And all of them have a specific role into achieving the highest success rates in the most safe and efficient way. Undergrade dissection reentry in specific comprises of two components. The first is dissection, which can occur either using a knuckle wire, which is usually a polymer jacketed guide wire, or using the dedicated cross boss catheter that is designed to advance in the submintimal space by having a one millimeter blunt atraumatic tip. Reentry in the undergrade direction can be achieved either using guide wires, for example, in this using the star technique, or the contrast star, the mini star of the last, or by using the dedicated stingray balloon and guide wire that is designed to facilitate reentry re into the distal true lumen. This is the first case of a mid right coronary artery chronic total occlusion that has a large acute marginal branch proximal to the proximal cap and a diffusely diseased distal vessel. We attempted undergrade crossing by using a coarser catheter as well as a filter XT guide wire, which, as you can see here, has entered into the subintimal space into the distal vessel. We advanced a stingray balloon. However, the balloon entered into a acute marginal branch, as shown in uh, this contralateral injection. Therefore, a filter XT wire was used to knuckle and allow us to bypass the acute marginal branch and uh, deliver the stingray balloon into the distal right coronary artery. Here's a stingray balloon inflated into the distal right coronary artery. What we can see already is that there's some compression of the distal true lumen, most likely by hematoma formation in the subintimal space. And this is something that is not uncommon into subintimal dissection reentry. And one way to get around this is by using the so called STRO technique or subintimal transcatheter withdrawal, into which the goal is to try to decompress the hematoma that has formed in the subintimal space. And we do that by advancing a second over the wire balloon and then aspirating through it and in this way re expanding the um, subintimal, the lumen distally and facilitating re entry to the lumen. And this is another diagram showing how subintimal hematoma can compress the distal to lumen. And then by aspirating the hematoma, which can actually also happen through the stingray balloon, this can allow the lumen to be re-expanded, thus facilitating distal re-entry. In this particular case, in spite of using the straw technique, the distal true lumen remained compressed. As a result, we did a blind stick and swab, and uh, by doing that, we were able to advance a pilot 200 guide wire into what appears to be a branch of the PDA, and this is a demonstration of the stick and swap technique in which uh, using the stingray wire, which is very stiff, one can enter into the distal true lumen, but then the wire may continue and actually exit in the subintimal space in the opposite wall. Instead, what we can do is remove the stingray guide wire and then advance a polymer guide wire, such as a Pilot 200, which is more likely to track the distal vessel into the distal true lumen. And that's exactly what we did in this case. And this um, orthogonal projection highlights that the wire has actually entered into the distal true lumen. We then went ahead and uh, placed tents by using contralateral injection to guide the initial deployment location of the stents. And after standing the entire right coronary artery, we were surprised to see a very limited distal outflow with occlusion of the right posterior lateral vessel as well as the right PDA. That was a challenging situation. And one way to get around this is we tried to rewire into the PL and the PDA. And this is what we did over here. And then by performed a small inflation with a 1.5 millimeter balloon. 
And by doing that, we were able to restore flow into the three branches. We then performed optical coherence tomography to try to better understand the mechanism of the spool outflow after standing. And what we are seeing is that there is a flap in the distal vessel, which most likely appears to be a dissection, and then there's good stand expansion and uh, stand strut uh, a position in some part in the more proximal parts of the vessel. So it appears that the mechanism of this um, uh, poor outflow is that the actual re-entry point was further distal into the vessel than what we had initially expected. And here are still frames demonstrating the end of the stand and then what appears to be a compressed distal true lumen with a dissection flap extending further distally into the vessel. Fortunately, after the inflation with a 1.5 millimeter balloon, TME3 flow was restored in all three distal branches and the patient was asymptomatic, hence we did not perform any further stent implantation. So, in summary, this case has several important conclusions. The first is that uh, performing distal reentry may compromise side branches. The second, that OCT can help us determine the exact location of the reentry site. And third, that uh, minimizing the length of distal stent placement may avoid losing the distal side branches. And we'll move then to the next case, which is also a case of dissection reentry in a proximal right coronary artery. The vessel is engaged with an Amplage 1 guide and the contralateral vessel with an XP 3.5 guide. And this is an uh, LAO with cranial projection, showing again a short occlusion, but with a very tortuous right coronary artery. Initial attempts with wire escalation did not uh, succeed in crossing. You can see here the position of the guide wire in a good marginal branch or in the pericardium. We then attempted to cross with the cross boss, which appears favorable in this view. However, in an orthogonal view, the cross boss appears to be in a side branch, so it's not where we'd like it to be. We then used a knuckle wire, a filter XD guide wire, to try to bypass that side branch and advance into the distal vessel. Here, the, ves the location is also sub uh, suboptimal. However, after further redirection, we were able to advance the knuckle around the right coronary artery into the distal part of the right coronary artery. The filter XT wire is actually the preferred wire for knuckle because it has uh, a soft tip and forms very tight knuckles, and also it has a 16 centimeter radiopaque tip which facilitates visualization of the guide wire in the distal vessel. In this case, we had a similar challenge as in the previous case, which is compression of the distal true lumen by subintimal hematoma formation. So similar to the previous case, we did perform aspiration using the straw technique. However, that failed to re-expand the distal true lumen. And then we once again performed the blind stick and swap technique by sticking both in the upwards direction and in the bottom direction. This is again the sticking with the Stingray guide wire. And then we changed, performed the stick and swap technique for the Pilot 200 guide wire. And by doing that, we were able to advance it into the distal true lumen. So here we have successful reentry into the distal true lumen with the Pilot 200 guide wire. We then exchanged it using a Corsair catheter for uh, a soft uh, workhorse guide wire, which uh, actually advanced into the occluded vein graft to the posterior descending artery, and then we were able to successfully stand the vessel, achieving nice TME3 flow. A question remained, however, as to the relative health of the distal vessel and on whether there was a dissection in the distal right coronary artery distal to the stents. To further clarify this, we once again performed optical coherence tomography, which demonstrated just diffuse disease in the vessel without any distal dissection. And there's some uh, diffuse fibrous lesion distal to the stents, but there is no area of dissection. And as a result, we elected to not place an additional stents and um, we let the vessel heal. What we know is that the vessel very often grows in size in the months after successful recanalization of the CTO. So in summary, the case, the second case, 
demonstrates once again the application of the stick and swap technique even when the distal to lumen is compressed and also illustrates the utility of intravascular imaging with optical coherence tomography to detect any dissection to distal to the stents that might uh, help us decide whether further standing is needed or not. All this uh, information, as well as a step-by-step -step description of undergrade dissection reentry, is included in the manual of coronary CTO interventions, which also includes step-by-step uh, uh, -step instructions on the undergrade wire and the retrograde approach. Thank you very much.